full. That's normal for me when I'm playing my instrument, and it's because I've worked on it as a skill. All right, but this kind of breathing isn't normal for everyday existence. All right, normal everyday activity. Normal everyday activity. How many people here practice 12 hours a day since the day they were born? Why is that funny? No. <laughs> Nobody does, which means we spend more time being human than we do being a brass player. <laughs> we spend more time human breathing between 10 and 20, 10 to 20, 25 percent of our lung capacity than we do breathing like a brass player. It's a skill. It's one that has to be acquired. It's one that you have to practice. And we'll talk about that later. Okay? So that's the deal. That's the deal. So the easy part about breathing for, for playing a brass instrument, it's O on the way in. And we should breathe in smoothly and evenly. If you want to know whether or not you're in the right shape, put some sort of resistance in the way when you're breathing in. And if the sound is that one, you're in the right shape. And if it's anything else, something's wrong. Something's in the way. The trick, the reason that we put our finger here when we're breathing in is to create resistance, is to have us our focus of attention on what sound we're making. But it's also to draw attention away from this and this. Away from this and this. Yes. Is that a conscious decision on your part to make a noise when you're taking a breath? No, yeah. it's the mouthpiece is in the way. Okay. Yeah. That's all. No, 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 I'm not trying to make a noise. I'm not for playing it too hard. Um, so that, 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 um, that's the easy part about breathing for playing a brass instrument. There, it's not any more complicated than that. It doesn't have to be. So let's all do this. Let's breathe in evenly for three counts and out evenly for three counts, but this time evenly and smoothly. So listen to it once. Join me. Very good, very good. That's all there is to it. Now, if you were in the position that I was in just now, and looking out at all of you, you would have noticed a number of things. You would have noticed that everybody was moving here. You would have noticed that everybody was moving here. You would have noticed that everybody was moving here. If everybody would have turned around, we would have noticed a little bit of movement, a little bit of movement back here. Why? Because that's where our lungs are. That's where they are. <laughs> our attention was focused on the exercise that I gave you and knowing what you know now about the physiology of the brain, you know it was impossible to be thinking about anything else. All right? This is not rocket science, being able to breathe like this. There are tons of there are books written about the breathing. I, I couldn't even write a pamphlet about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's this, oh, and this. Simple, all right? It's that easy. If you're doing those things, if you can make that sound happen, I guarantee you, you're open the way you need to be. And if you're focused on the feeling of your finger touching your lips and on what I ask you to think about, which is what? Oh, I know that you can't be thinking about this and this because I know about the physiology of the brain. And that's why it worked for every single person in the room. I was watching as you were doing this. Everybody. And everybody was moving just a little bit here. Why? Because there are muscles that are on our back that are attached over the front that attach to the rib cage that provide some lift to the rib cage to allow expansion of our lungs. So when you breathe in and out, it is normal for your shoulders to move. How many people have been given the instruction, don't move your shoulders when you move? <laughs> inefficient, inefficient. What are they trying to do? They're trying to get you to stop doing this. All right? But I'll stop that with the student every single time by saying, say, oh, oh, say it again, oh, say it again, oh, now do this. Make that sound, bang, and their shoulders stop moving. All right? Rather than say, don't move your shoulders, because your shoulders need to move. All right? To give an instruction about a part of your body that you don't want to move at all is to create a sense of awareness, to draw attention to it. So what do you do? Don't, put, don't move your shoulders up. So you draw them down so that you can feel that. You're thinking in your mind, my shoulders are down. You know what? That's just as tense as if they were up here. It's just tension in the other direction. Bad instruction? No. Just inefficient. This is much more efficient. It's right straight to the point. Okay. So, easy part about breathing. Oh, what about sound? What about playing the instrument? What about it? What's the deal there? Is that complicated? No, it's the same thing. It's air makes buzz makes sound. We can choose to play open. Or we can choose to play open.
choose to play closed. Or anything in between. So you pick. What did I change? What did we change to take a better breath? Hey, what did we change to take a better breath? When we were breathing, we changed the shape here, right? We changed the shape here. The same is true of tone. The same is true of sound. You just heard me. I didn't change mouthpieces or horns or, you know, any sort of whatever else. I didn't put heavy valve caps on the back or anything. <laughs> is changing. This is changing. So, if it's O on the way in, which is the most even and efficient way to breathe in, then the same is true on the way out, but with some sort of articulation. So if it's a softer articulation, it would be a D or DO, and if it was a harder articulation, it would be a T or TO. So it's O on the way in, it's TO on the way out. It's that simple. That's the easy part about playing a brass instrument. If you do that every single time you pick up the axe, you'll play as well as anybody else with the proper investment of time, whatever that might be, 45 minutes every third solstice or <laughs> several hours a day, whatever the deal is. Okay? Let's talk about the difficult part about playing a brass instrument, and then I'm going to open it up for questions for you. The difficult part about playing a brass instrument does not relate to skills, does not relate to being able to play extremely high or extremely low on an instrument. That's not hard to do those types of things, all right, or being able to play with whatever kind of tone that you might think was beautiful or something. That's not difficult to do. All right? Just I'll explain what this in a second. We're going to play fast, you know. All that kind of stuff. Those things aren't hard. 